Hello, I'm Adam Hitaney. I'm the head of game design at Deck 13 Interactive, and I would like to welcome you to our demo of The Surge. With me today is Sebastian Zoibelt. He'll be doing the driving today. But before we begin, I'd like to give you a quick summary of our game. The Surge is a hardcore action RPG with a focus on tactical melee combat. We're in a dystopian near future version of Earth. You can see here from the surroundings, things are a little broken up. Uh, in our game, global warming and ecological problems have advanced to crisis levels in the world. Likewise, the global economy is in shambles, so regular men and women are in a lot of trouble. It's really difficult for people to find work, so our hero, Warren, is lucky to have found a job at all, particularly at a company like Creo, which is dedicated to solving the world's ecological problems. So his first day on the job, he's getting his exo rig applied. You can see here attached to his body and you know some of our other materials. But something goes very wrong with this process. He loses consciousness and wakes up here. So let's get going. Okay. So this is an operation center. Functions a bit like a hub for us. You can uh, you can do some crafting here. You can use your tech scrap to level up your exo rig. But we're not going to do that yet. We're going to head right into the action. This is one of our new co-workers. He's, uh, he's not in very good shape, as we can see. He's a little aggressive. I think we're going to need to defend ourselves. Now, melee combat in the Surge is stamina-based. That means that, that while you're in combat, you're going to need to manage your stamina resource, or you might find yourself unable to complete a combo that you want to finish, or you know, unable to dodge away from a counterattack. It's just something you need to pay attention to while you fight. And in the Surge, attacks are not light or heavy attacks, but rather horizontal and vertical attacks. And that's because the swing direction of your attacks actually matters. In the Surge, you can see here, you can target specific body parts. So directing attacks towards unarmored or vulnerable areas deals increased damage. It's more likely to stagger your opponent. So it really pays to observe your enemies, pick out their weak points when you're, uh, when you're going in for the kill there. Another thing that we really like to emphasize is that it's really good and beneficial for you to scan your environment, to look around for enemies and loot. You know, exploration is really important to us. So looking around, we see this guy in the dark banging his head. Now he's different from the other enemies we fought so far in that he has a helmet, which is something that maybe we want to take home with us, make it ours. So that brings me to the other aspect of body part targeting which is that if you target a body part and deal enough damage, you will then be able to use combat energy like this to execute a finishing sequence. Mm. It's mean. So you chop off that body part and you loot it, and then we can take that back to the operations center where we can use our new blueprint to craft that helmet for our very own selves. So moving further into the area here, uh, you can see that we don't have just humanoid enemies, we also have a variety of robotic enemies. Many of these will also have limbs that can be chopped off, you know, this could give you various rewards, new implants, new weapons, things like that. But these disassembly drones are more simple. They don't have different body parts, they're just trying to chop you up, but we're not going to let them do that. And what is this? We see something in the, in the rocket shell over here. Okay, this is also a new blueprint. So when we return to operations, we'll be able to craft the security staff as well. Looks like we're not able to go through that door yet, but there is an overcharge station nearby. So overcharging allows you to channel the core power of your exo rig to, uh, to overload some circuits. Sometimes that'll open doors, sometimes that will add power to places that had no power. Oh, and sometimes it will allow you to be jumped by a giant robot dog. You can see here the robot dog is a little bit of a mini boss for the purposes of this demo. It's much more aggressive than the other enemies we fought, deals a lot more damage, but you can see it also has a weakness. If we 
punch it right in its robot eye when it's leaping at us, we can actually interrupt it and then score a follow-up attack of our own. Be careful. All right. Now that we have him taken care of, we can explore the warehouse a little bit more. Oh, maybe he'll be friends. No, I guess not. I guess he doesn't want to be friends. Something that's really important to us is that all of our enemies have purpose in the world. You can see that these guys, they have a heavier rig, they have these forklift weapons. Uh, you know, they really fit in the area that they're found. They're kind of like these mover loader employees, uh, but the way they yell and attack you shows that there's something still a bit wrong with them. So up here is an exolith. Let me try that out. Or we will not. We will deal with our friend here, and then we will use the exolith. Our two friends. So an exolift, it's the uh, the way that, that Warren can reach different vertical areas, can go higher or lower. It functions very much like a ladder, but we think it's cooler. Now here's another overcharge station. The difference is that this one is a higher level. Now, uh, like I mentioned before, Security exploration is a major online. element of the game Enjoy for us, ease. and you'll have Please a lot of reasons to explore the world of the Surge. We see our levels as being pretty Metroidvanian in nature, they're really interconnected, and you'll find a lot of areas that you're not able to access until later in the game, until you have more power or different capabilities. So when you find something that you're not able to open yet, it's really a good reason to backtrack later to fully explore. A lot of times you'll find other encounters or rare loot. But now that we've turned on the power to the warehouse here, we're able to go through this door that we just opened, which seems to open up a shortcut back to the operations. So that's a pretty good opportunity for us to craft some new gear with all these blueprints that we've gathered. This is not a scheduled break time. I think it is time. a scheduled break time, thank you. So up ahead here is a med bay. This is what allows you to use your tech scrap to power up your exo rig. It heals you, of course. And then here we have a crafting station, so let's use that. Okay, so we see the blueprints that we've acquired so far. We see the helmet, we see the staff. Let's go ahead and make these things. Make the staff. Make the loader weapons. And this is really the, uh, the core gear loop for the game. You know, you cut off pieces from your enemies, you learn the blueprints, and then you use those to craft new equipment for yourself. So let's go ahead and try on some of these things that we've crafted. Security staff, loader weapons. Sweet new helmet that we got before. And they also have this armor piece. Now, this particular piece of chest armor will illuminate in the darkness. It casts these bright lights. It helps you to see, helps you to find enemies and find loot. You know, other armors will, uh, you know, do things like protect you from environmental hazards. So it's really important for you to experiment with different pieces of equipment, see what sort of special effects they give so that you know how to approach all the challenges of the world in the most effective way. So like I said, we can use tech scrap at the med bay to level up our core power. Looks like right now, yeah, we don't have enough to get a full level up yet, but that's okay because now we've banked that tech scrap so we don't lose it when we die. And then we also have the implants, which I mentioned before. So implants can have passive benefits. They can also be active injectables like Sebastian has been using to recover his health when he's low. But all implants use different amounts of core power. So as you play the game, you really have to sort of balance the, the core power requirements and your total core power against the, uh, you know, your personal gameplay style and the sort of effects that you think are most important. All right, so why don't we head out and try some of these new these new toys that we've made. Be careful out there. Okay, so this is the way we like to do cutscenes in the search. We 
don't like to take control of your camera, you know, you make the cutscenes all part of the movie. You know, what that means is that you know, you watch them or not, they're always just going to occur around you, and whether you pay attention or not, it's, it's really up to you. Sometimes we'll offer a context camera so you can have a more cinematic view, but it's never required. It's always your choice. And all of our different weapons, they have different move sets, different feels all together, different finishing sequences. Pretty brutal. So as you get new weapons in the Surge, you'll really want to test them out, see which one feels the best to you, which one is most effective in your own hands. It's really your choice. The loader weapons are faster, more agile, a little more combo y, but also pretty brutal. Okay, so now that we're more comfortable with these, these new weapons, why don't we go back through the shortcut and see what's on the other side of things? They're dangerous. Reboot in progress. Okay, yeah, so I was talking before about the context camera. Uh, this is what lets you have a more cinematic view as this angry boss robot gets up out of the rubble. You can watch it if you want. You can also prepare for the boss fight. That's totally fine. You can see he wanted to shoot you with the railgun. Fortunately for him, it is malfunctioned, so he's going to have to use a little bit more of a personal touch. Doing damage to the boss's real health. But we are increasing the threat analysis meter, so I guess we should figure out what happens when the threat analysis is full. Punitive measures, huh? Rehabilitation implemented. Well, of course. Rockets. Not very nice. That's what I do when I do most of But we still haven't dealt any damage to its real health bar. So maybe if we're careful, we can use those rockets against it somehow. Oh, pretty close. Okay, there we go. So now we force it to be hit by its own rockets. We're able to target its armor piece, knock it off, and then give it a good solid punch right in its robot brain, which has dealt some real damage. So let's see if we can repeat this process. Now one thing to note is that uh, you know this is this is one way to defeat the boss, but it's certainly not the only way to defeat the boss. And this easier method does not allow you to receive the most powerful loot. So if you want the best things off the bosses, then you know what to fight them fair. Show honor. Not really. It's not really a game about honor. Threat analysis is almost full again. See what happens. Dispensing down, Let's see if we can get at its other armor piece. Okay, very nice. Boss defeated. Well done. So that's the surge. It's good. Seriously, how long does it take to open a door? Just bypass the security protocol. Now what?
Changing the world is easy. Governments, corporations, they've always done it. Until this is all that's left. Slowly roasting under the solar rays. Forged from imperfection, steeled by technology. We're the cogs in their machine. And yet we struggle on. We are human, so we fight. But are we fighting for our future or theirs? <laughs> <laughs>